What's going on, folks? I am back for my second video this week because two videos ago, you guys actually hit a thousand likes. That's insane. But we are going to head on down to Park Casino to try and break our three or four loss streak at this point. Uh, we are currently down almost $5,000 at Park. So we're going to head down there. We're going to fix that. I'm going to film every single hand I play. So hopefully we get a lot done. I'm going to put in probably a decent session. We'll shoot for eight hours, see how it goes. And I'm bringing many, many reloads with me. Lots of money to give away to more people that would like to play 2-5 at Park with me. Uh, bring in three bullets, two five, 1500 max. Let's get down to the casino and get the cards in the air. We pick up our first playable hand just a few hands into the session. We got ace 10 off under the gun and open it up to 15. Bolts round, we get one cold caller from the hijack before the cutoff puts in the squeeze to $60. Bolts back to me and I think it's pretty credible that I can have a very strong hand here considering I raised under the gun. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my hand into a bluff. Raise it up to 180, hijack folds, and after a little bit of thought from the cutoff, he's got about $900 behind, decides to put in half his stack up to 450, and I guess we just ran into it again. <laughs> oh well. Lojack has raised to 20, hijack cutoff, and small blind have called. I look down at a suited 10 in the big blind. This is a no-brainer call. Five ways to a flop of ace, queen, three, we got a backdoor straight and a backdoor flush draw, but not much going on, especially five ways. And now small blind leads up for three quarters, pot $75, and we are going to move on to the next hand. At this point in the session, the game is moving very slow. We have a few players taking, you know, 15, 20 seconds for their actions pre-flop, and my impatience is ramping up. So we look down at the king five suited in the small blind face in two raises, and we decide to put in the squeeze up to 100. Big blind folds, middle position, and hijack both calls. We're going three ways to this flop, which is weird. It's king, queen, ten, all spades. We do have top pair, but it is a very messy board. Definitely going to start with a check out of position here, and action checks all the way through. Turn is the six of diamonds. I still don't think there's too much sense in betting here. Uh, we get raised, we just have to fold, which sucks. So I'm going to go ahead and check once again, and action once again checks all the way through. And to the river, it is the four of hearts, changes nothing. Actually a really nice run out for our king five. Got to go for some value here. I put in a bet of 150, around half pot, and we get two quick folds. In this next hand, we're looking at three limbs, and we got pocket nines on the button. An actually playable hand. I bump it up to $35. These small blind calls, middle position calls, low jack folds, and high jack folds as well. We're going three ways to this flop of queen, 10, seven, two hearts, one spade. Checks to me, I don't think there's any sense betting this three ways, especially with a hand this middling, so I'm just going to check it back. Turn is alright, it's the jack of clubs, we do improve to an open ender, but now small blind leads out for $85, a very hefty bet into two players, and no, our outs are just so poisoned, and we're never ahead, so I think this is just a fold, especially for this very large sizing, so into the muck. We got another pocket pair. Let's try and hit a set. We haven't hit one yet in Vancouver, and I used to be really good at it. Uh, we got two limps. I raise up the pocket twos in the cutoff to $30. We get a call from the button, as well as both limpers. Four ways to this flop of queen, jack, five, rainbow. When it checks to me with four people in this hand, I'm not going to barrel off here, so I just check it back and button checks behind. Turn is the ace of clubs. It checks to me. I just don't think there's any point in betting here four ways, so I'm going to check this back and button checks again. River is the 10 of spades. Could probably bluff now. I don't know. Middle position checks, low jack checks. I decide just to check it and button puts in a very large bet once again of 105. Folds back to me and yeah, we fold. We fold. There's an under the gun limp before we look down at a very beautiful ace king off a welcome sight. I raise it up to $25, a middle position player to my left calls, and we get two more callers from Big Blind and the original Limper. Four ways to this flop of Jack-9-8 Rainbow. Not connecting today, unfortunately. Big Blind checks, under the gun checks, I'm just going to check this four ways. And once again, the player to my left puts in a hefty bet of $75. We are just giving this man all the money in the multi-way pots. Uh, big blind puts in a raise to 200, and when it get back, gets back to us, we obviously fold. The under the gun straddle is live. We look down at ace jack off in middle position and put in the raise to 25. 
holds around to the straddler who now puts in another raise, but it's quite small. It's only to $75. Uh, we're in position. I'm a little bit tilted, so I do decide to make the call. Going heads up to a flop of king, nine, four, two spades, one diamond. And interestingly enough, my opponent checks it over to me. And I started thinking here, and I don't think he would ever check a hand like king, queen, ace, king, or pocket kings here, or pocket aces. Unless he's going for the check raise. But I just don't see him checking a strong hand. I think he's going to have pocket queens, pocket jacks, maybe tens sometimes. So I'm just going to barrel him off here and go for three streets and get it all in by the river. But we start with a small bet of 50. My opponent makes the call. Turns all right. It's a 10 of diamonds. I don't really expect him to have pocket tens here. But we do pick up a gut shot now. And when he checks to me, we're just going to keep firing. I just don't think he's going to be able to call here. Is he really going to hero me with pocket queens? And I just don't think he's a king. So I'm just going to go for it. I put in 200. And after a little while, my opponent decides on a fold. Picking up a nice little pot here. We get another try with the pocket nines. This time I open it up to 15. Player to my left calls and we get one more caller before the small blind and older gentleman puts in the squeeze up to $90. Big blind folds and when I looked over at him, he's doing the uh, look up in the air to pretend you're not interested. This man has aces. Maybe kings, but probably aces. And we are a little bit deep and I do believe if I flop a set, the stacks are going to go in. I don't think he's going to fold an over pair, so we call in position, middle position folds, button folds as well. Heads up to a flop of king, 10, 5, 2 spades, 1 club. And once again, my opponent checks it over to me. But I'm very cautious with this guy. He is quite a bit older. He's playing quite slowly. And just the look away, it just looked very strong. I just don't think he's got queens here. I think he's trapping. So I check this back. We go to the turn, which is the four of diamonds. And it becomes very evident that my opponent doesn't have pocket queens when he assembles a very large bet of $250. Yeah. All right. On to the next hand. Open up the pocket fives under the gun, and we only get one caller from the big blind. Heads up to this flop of ace, eight, four, one club, two hearts. He checks to me. I decide just to check this one back and play some turns. Turn is the queen of clubs. Opponent puts in a pretty quick bet of 20. I don't know. I think we're just done with this hand at this point. So we fold. We have a limper and the player to his left is raised up to 25. And I look down at ace queen off in the big blind. This time I decide just to call. I'd rather not get too aggressive with this one out of position. And this invites the limper in as well. Three ways to a flop of 10, 6, 3, 2 clubs, 1 spade. I check it, and action checks all the way through. Turn is the deuce of diamonds. We got nothing going on here, so I check it once again. Now the limper puts in a bet of 60. When it folds back to me, we are not going to hero this off. We fold. The tilt is really starting to set in this session. Uh, it's just been creeping up over the last few sessions over here at Park, but cut off his race to 20, small blind called. I decide to make a little bit of a looser defend against a 4x open with the queen 9. Three ways to a flop, and we flop top pair in queen 6-3 rainbow. Small blind checks, I check, and now the older gentleman bets out for $40. Small blind folds, and you guys are just going to have to trust me on this, but this is 100% a fold. But I'm tilted, so I made the call, knowing full well that I am never, ever, ever good here. We go to the turn, which is the five of spades. I check it once again, and my opponent puts in another bet of 100, and it's time to just let this hand go. Top pair, no good. This hand is a mess. Under the gun has raised to 15. Middle position and low jack have called, and the player to my right is grabbing calling chips. I am getting ready to put in the 95 to $100 squeeze until he puts in the squeeze, but it's up to $30, a min raise. And this is kind of annoying. I still thought about squeezing. But when I look over his stack, he's only got like 350. So if we squeeze 100, he's going to shove. We call. This just sucks. What a horrible min raise. How has this actually put me in such a brutal spot? Like, I guess we just overcall. So I put in 30. This invites a small blind and the big blind in. And all the callers as well. So we're going seven ways to this flop. And we flop top pair on Jack 9-9 nine, nine Rainbow. 
And this is our third top pair that we don't feel good about. Especially since it's seven ways. Action checks all the way to me. I think that betting here is a mistake seven ways. We only have top pair, pretty much no kicker. So I check this back. Turn is the seven of spades. So we do have a gut shot now, which is nice. And action once again checks all the way around to me. We definitely need to put in a bet here. It doesn't have to be too, too big. But I think around half pot sounds good. So I put in the bet of 100. And everybody bolts. Yeah. All right, folks. So not running the best. Getting a little bit tilted, a little bit frustrated, experiencing human emotions. So going to take a step away from the table for a little bit. Get myself some alcohol. And... Hopefully things go better in the second half of my session. We're playing for about two, three hours now. A little bit on the card dead side, not really hitting much, not really doing anything. And the table is very, very, very slow. Maybe 15, 20 hands an hour. So getting a little bit frustrated with it about all these things, but I'm sure a drink will help. So let's go get that drink. I'll see you guys shortly. I am back from my drink. I had a wasabi margarita. It was delicious and I am ready to go. Uh, we come into the big line and we actually pick up a hand right away. Button has raised, small blind has called, and I put in the squeeze with pocket eights. 85 to go, and both my opponents make the call. Three ways to a flop of king, queen, four, two hearts, one club. Small blind checks, and probably just going to put in one c-bet and then give up here. So, 75 in the middle, and it gets the job done. All right, all right, that drink is helping. We look down at the greatest hand ever created, pocket aces. The straddle is live, and I bump it up to $25. We get one call from the cutoff as well as the straddle, so we're going three ways to this flop. And we finally hit a set, but it is the worst set of all. It is the dreaded top set. It's very hard to get paid when you hit top set, but can't really complain too much. Under the gun checks, I start with a small bet of $25. Cutoff calls and under the gun folds. Turn is the six of clubs, and here you should probably start checking with pocket aces specifically. But I made a mistake here and went for the over bet of 200. This is nicer if you have a hand like ace three or ace six or ace queen or pocket kings, pocket threes, just something that doesn't block all of their calls. Like he can only continue with a set here or a weirdly played ace king, which barely exists anymore. So I don't like this bet at all. This should be a check. And my opponent makes a pretty easy fold there. Unfortunate. Open up the 8-7 of diamonds to $15, and we only get one caller from the button. Heads up to this flop of ace-queen-7 rainbow. Could definitely start using this hand as a bluff, but this player just doesn't really like to fold. So I'm just going to check it. And my opponent checks behind. Turn is another queen. Looks pretty good to me. And this is a guy who I think would definitely be betting any ace or any queen on the flop. So I think we have the best hand here almost always. So I put in a bet of 15 and my opponent calls. River is the six of diamonds. Going to try and get a tiny bit more value. I put in a bet of 10. And then he raises to 35. So annoying. This is so annoying. Uh, I don't think we're good here. I think he would size up a bit bigger if he had a bluff. Looks like... I was just wrong, and he checked back a queen. I'm not paying the 25. I fold. I fold. Middle position has called. Button has now raised to $30. Uh, I decided just this time just to flat here instead of re-raise. Big blind folds and middle position calls. Three ways to this flop of 653 rainbow. Going to start with a check here. I could lead, but if somebody just decide to check, middle position checks and action checks all the way through. Turn is the jack of clubs. Uh, we do have a gut shot here, and doesn't look like people have too much, so I'm going to go ahead and bet this one out for $60. Middle position makes the call, and button folds. I'm probably just going to blast off on any non-club river. Unfortunately, we get the four of clubs on the river. Yeah, I just don't think we can bluff this, so I check it and give up. Opponent checks back, and unfortunately, he had the king four of hearts, which we could have definitely bluffed off, but that... It's unfortunate. This is the very next hand, and this was an extremely active orbit. We played like seven hands out of ten this orbit, so <laughs> buckle in. Uh, we got an under the gun limp to five. I raised the queen, ten of clubs, up to 30 on the button. And we get a caller from the big blind as well as under the gun. 
Three ways to a flop of eight, deuce, deuce, two spades, one heart. When it checks to me, we should definitely be checking this back, but I'm gonna fire once and then give up. So I put in a bet of 30 and it gets the job done. So we managed to win a few chips there. Once again, the very next hand, 10 nine of clubs up to $15, only the big blind defense. Heads up to a flop of king, seven, three, two diamonds, one spade. We have absolutely nothing, but my opponent does play pretty fit or fold. So I put in a bet of 15 and we win a few more chips here. This is our fourth hand in a row. Pocket fours, look at that. Bumping up to $15, we get a call from the cutoff as well as both the blinds, and we go four ways to a flop of queen, queen, seven, rainbow. We just can't hit anything. <laughs> Small blind checks, big blind checks, and I'm just gonna check four ways and cut off checks behind. Turn is another queen, so now we do have a full house, but it's a pretty bad one. When it checks to me, definitely wanna get some value from ace highs, and that's about it. I put in a bet of 25, and we once again take it down, so it's a pretty decent result. Another hand in a row, ace-jack of, of hearts. I bump it up to 15 before the player to my left re-raises to 50. Folds back to me, and this is already pretty close. I would never four-bet this player. He's way too tight, but I don't even think calling is that great here, playing out of position. But folding's also no fun, so I make the call. We're a little bit deep. Flop comes down, 5-5-5, five, 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 rainbow. I check, and we face a pretty large bet for this board of $50. This player just does like to use big bets, so I don't know. I'm going to call here, and the turn is the 9 of diamonds. Check once again, and we face another large bet of 150 and it's time to just let the hand go. And to end the orbit off, we have Jack-10 offsuit in the big blind. Under the gun has raised to 20, middle position, and cutoff is called, and we defend. Four ways to a flop of 954 rainbow, continuing the trend of not hitting anything this orbit. Well, that's all right. Uh, we check and action checks all the way through. Turn is the four of diamonds. I check once again. Uh, the undergun player puts in a bet of 20. There's a caller, and when it gets back to us, we just fold. Low jack has raised to 20. We look on an ace three of clubs in the cutoff, and we choose to re raise this time up to 65. Folds back round, and my opponent makes the call. Heads up to a flop of Jack-10-5, Rainbow. We do the backdoor flush and a backdoor straight draw and an overcard. We got two backdoor straight draws, actually. So when Low Jack checks to me, I'm going to start with a bet here and see what happens on the turn. So I put in a bet of 45. My opponent makes a quick call. Uh, off to the turn, it is the three of spades. He once again checks it over to me, and I'm starting to feel like if he had pocket jacks or pocket tens or Jack-10 suited, we would probably know about it. Probably on the flop, and if not the flop, then at least on the turn. So with our additional equity, we got some two pair and trips out. I'm just going to keep barreling here. Um, I would probably go for around a pot size bet here. I think the jack and ten are a little bit too scary to just start blasting over bets with pocket aces and kings and queens. So I'm going to go just pot here. 225. And after quite a bit of tanking, my opponent calls. Head to the river, it is the eight of diamonds, doesn't change anything. My opponent once again checks it, and I just don't think he's going to call if he has a hand like King Jack or something. And now we have to decide on a size. If I have pocket aces here, I don't want to go pot. I think it's a little bit too big. So I'm going to go around two thirds here, and I put in another bet of $450, which is met with a sigh, which is very nice. It's what you like to hear and a very long tank. Takes about three, four minutes, maybe five, before eventually deciding. He grabs his cards, and then he grabs some chips, and then he grabs some cards again, and then mucks. And we do get that one through, and now we're gonna be moving over to the main game. We are now over the main game, and it is a 2-5 with a mandatory 10. Looks good to me. I open up the ace deuce of clubs up to $25. Folds around and only the straddle makes a call. Heads up to the flop of queen, queen, eight, two diamonds, one club. My opponent checks it. We do have the backdoor flush draw and it supports me much better for me. So a small bet is in order. $20 into the middle, which my opponent calls. The turn is the four of clubs. We do pick up the nut flush draw. Opponent checks again. On paired boards, you don't really want to go for these over bets. So once again, just going to use a pot sized bet. Opponent thinks for a little bit, and then makes the call again. River is the king of spades, doesn't change a whole lot. 
And my opponent once again checks. And I think if he had a queen, we would probably hear from it. So I think he's maybe gone 8 here at best. Maybe the king will scare him. But anyways, if I did have a king here, if I was barreling off like ace, king of diamonds, it would probably go around two thirds again. So $200. And we get a pretty long tank once again. And my opponent is mulling it over. And once again decides on a fold. So we're getting back to back bluffs through. We pick out the pocket eights under the gun. I didn't realize that the straddle was on. Don't tweet at me. It wasn't my fault. I raise it up to 15. Player to my left calls and we get two more callers. We are going four ways to this flop. Let's hit a set. It comes down. Queen, jack, five, two clubs, one diamond. I used to be so good at this. Like five sets a session and now I can't make one. But we check it over. Under the gun checks. Cut off puts in a bet of 30 and we just fold. We look down at ace, king, off, and a lot of limps. There are four limpers, so we bump up the price of poker to $80. We get a call from the big blind as well as the first limper, and everyone else folds. Three ways to this flop. It's quite nice. It's queen, six, three, one club, two spades. So we do have the spade blocker if that comes in, and we can use it, as well as two over cards, and we can definitely bluff our way through this hand. I'm going to start with a bet of $80 here. Big blind calls. And now the first limper who has flopped himself a set puts in the raise to 300 right away, and we get out of there. We have a cutoff limp, and we look down at 7 5 of hearts on the button. Good enough for a raise, I think, so $40, and only my opponent makes the call. Heads up to a flop of jack, 9, 3, 2 clubs, 1 spade. Whole lot of nothing going on here, but this opponent is the fit or fold opponent from the last table, so I'm going to see bet 100% versus him, and I put in a bet of 25 he does make a call, and we're going to give up pretty much every turn. However, that turns the eight of hearts, which gives me a double gut shot, which I wasn't even thinking about at the time. But when I looked at it, I think that is a card we can continue barreling on. So when my opponent checks, I am going to keep barreling here, and I put in another wager of 125, which gets a nice quick fold. Under the gun has limbed. We look down at jack nine of hearts in middle position, bump it up to $40. Very solid reg now puts in the 3-bet up to 125, and then it folds round to the big blind, who's in the tank, and then decides to cold call the 125. The limper gets out of the way, and this should still just be a fold, even with a cold caller, but I am quite card dead. The game is moving very slowly, and I just want to see a flop, so I toss in the call, and we go to a flop, and we see the queen of hearts in the window followed by the Ace of Clubs and the Eight of Diamonds. We only have a gut shot here, and it's not a particularly good one, but I don't expect either of my opponents to have King Jack too often, so our gut shots play pretty clean. Uh, under the gun checks, or sorry, the straddler checks, I check, and cut off checks behind. Hence the turn, it is the Four of Clubs. Now the Cold Caller puts in a bet of $70, very, very, very small. We are definitely gonna float here with our gut shot and the original Razor gets out the way. Hence the river, it is the deuce of clubs. No hope for us, we are just probably going to fold this. Until he now puts in a bet of only 115. Those are two very small bets. And I start to think, what kind of hands would want to do this? But honestly, I shouldn't even give this any thought. This would just be a fold. But 115 and a $70 bet on the turn? This feels like pocket kings, maybe ace king, ace jack suited. I know his range is quite tight, but these sizings just seem so small, like he just wants to get to showdown. And the amount of mental gymnastics I had to do to convince myself to bluff here was just outrageous. This should just be a fold. So I raise it up to $650, and we don't get snap called. In fact, I put my opponent deep into the tank. He is talking out loud about what hands I could have here, running it through, running it through a very, very long tank. It sounds like this stupid idiot play is going to work until it doesn't. And after about four or five minutes, my opponent makes the call. I show my hand and he shows pocket queens with the club for middle set. Every big bluff I do, I get called by a full house, <laughs> not even just snap called. Just tank called by like the second or third nuts. Uh, I might just have to stop bluffing. It's clearly not working out for us. What a terrible, terrible hand.
Just two hands later, we look down at three deuce of spades in the straddle. There's been two limpers before the player from the last hand in the small blind makes it 60 to go. Big blind folds, and we are going to make one tilt call. One tilt call, and then we'll get back to playing normal. So I make the call, and both the limpers call as well. And four ways to a flop of 8552 five, spades. Pretty nice. We have the worst flush draw imaginable in a four way pot, and we're deep. Perfect. Small blind now puts in a very small bet again, one fifth pot of $45, and we are just going to raise this right away. I bump it up to 185, and unless he has quads, I don't think he's calling. Middle position folds and hijack folds as well. Small blind, after a little bit of thought, does make the call. So I'm quite worried now, but the turn is the ace of diamonds, giving us a gut shot as well. Small blind checks once again. Probably should just check this back, but I don't know. If he's tank calling pocket queens, let's just hope he doesn't have a full house or quads and try to get him off pocket tens or something. So I'm going to put in another bet. I put in a wager of $500. And he goes deep into the tank once again. After a minute or two, he asked me how much I have behind, which is not what you want to hear. And then after some more thinking, he just decides to let it go. Thank God that tilt adventure did not cost us even more money there. We have pocket tens facing a limp and bump it up to $40. Pulls back round, only the limper makes a call. We go heads up to a really nice flop of 5532 five, clubs. He checks. I'm going to start with a small bet of 35 and we get a pretty quick call. Turn is a queen of clubs, and my opponent checks once again. If the queen wasn't a club, I would probably start checking this back, but he's just never going to hit this unless he has a flush, because if he calls a flush draws, then he would have the queen of clubs, which doesn't exist now. Anyways, I put in a bet of 100, trying to get value from a hand like 6s or 7s, but this is where the hand ends this time. Another limp, and we look down at 8, 7 of hearts in the low jack, make it $40 to go. We get two callers plus the original limper, so we are going four ways to this flop of 10, five, deuce, two clubs, one diamond. Whole lot of nothing going on, so when it checks to me, I just check it. Hijack puts in a bet of 60, and I return my cards to the dealer. We open up the king nine of diamonds up to $25 in middle position. We get one call from the low jack as well as two more from the blinds. We're going four ways to this flop of king, queen, three, two hearts, one diamond. Top pair, no kicker with the backdoor flush draw. And four ways, so when it checks to me, just going to check this one back. Now Lojack puts in a very big bet of $85. The blinds get out of the way, and this is already not feeling great. But we do have top pair, and this guy's a little bit crazy, so I make the call. The turn is the six of clubs. We don't improve. I check, and my opponent makes a very fast all-in. And, yeah, it just doesn't feel great. It feels like he's got king-queen or pocket threes, but... This line is also taking my bluffs, so I just close my eyes, say YOLO, and chuck my chips in the middle, and hope that I can turn my session around. River is the nine of spades. Looks pretty good. I roll it over, and my opponent just had the jack three of hearts, so he had a lot, a lot, a lot of outs. But we managed to hold, and we make back. I think we're slightly back in the profit now, which I gotta say felt really, really nice at the time. Open up the king-queen off up to 25 under the gun. We get a call from middle position as well as the small blind and the straddle. Four ways to this flop of 665 rainbow. Small blind checks and now straddle leads for $30. That actually makes a lot of sense. Nice lead, but we fold, of course. We've got pocket aces again. Two times, amazing. This time we're in the straddle. We have a limper before the reg makes it 50 in the low jack. Folds around to the big blind who makes the call, and we are definitely putting in the squeeze here. It's going to be a hefty one. I bump it up to 265. Under the gun folds, the original razor folds. And now the player to my right puts his chips in a stack. Come on, just push him forward, push him forward. Slowly pushes him forward. Is he going to do it? Yes, he is all in. We obviously call. We are going heads up to this flop of 10, 10, 6 rainbow. Looks good to me. The turn. It's the 8 of diamonds. River. The five of clubs, my opponent shakes his head, and we are going to scoop that one, and we're actually having a pretty good night now. A lot of drinks are coming in, the table's very chatty, the uh, speed has improved, and the table's just fun. I'm, I'm enjoying myself, especially after this hand now. The straddle is live, and we face a large open to 35 on my right. 
Facing these large opens, I do decide to re-raise more often than I call, and let's get some redemption with a Jack-9 of hearts. I bump it up to 115, and we get it through, so pretty happy with that one. The low jack has raised to 30, and we looked at an ace-king off in the big blind. Definitely worthy of a re-raise, so I make it 120. Only the original razor calls, so we're going heads up to a flop. We flop top pair, but it's a little dangerous on king-jack-9, two spades, one club. I think it's a little bit too thin to start going for value here, and we definitely want to have some very strong hands in our checkback range on such a dynamic board out of position, so I'm going to start with a check here and play a little defensively, and my opponent puts in a bet of 80. I think check raising a little bit silly here with ace-king, no spades, so I'm just going to call, and we see a turn, which is the eight of diamonds. Board's getting even more connected now. I check once again. Probably going to call once again, but my opponent checks behind. River is the seven of clubs, so... Now we're also losing to pocket 10s, but I'd expect them to bet on the turn. But we're losing to a lot, and we don't beat too much. So our options here are either bet small to try and get value from a hand like king-queen, or pocket queens, or ace-jack maybe. Or we can check and allow him to bluff, but I don't see him going for it too often here on the river. So I'm going to try and get a little bit of thin value here. I put in a wager of 175. A little bit too big, I think I miscalculated this. And my opponent does make a pretty fast fold. So, nice. Facing a limper, we open the ace-10 of diamonds up to 40. And only the limper makes a call. Heads up to a really nice flop of 10-4-4 rainbow. When he checks to me, I start with a small bet of 25. And unfortunately, he just folds. The straddle is off this hand for whatever reason. But middle position is raised to 15. And I toss in the call with a three deuce of diamonds in the big line. Heads up to a flop of king-4-3 rainbow. I check, and we face a $15 bet. Easy call here. Head to the turn. It is the deuce of spades. We make bottom two. I check once again, and this time my opponent decides to check behind. River is the seven of clubs. Doesn't change anything. And with the check back on a double flush board on the turn, my opponent is very, very, very capped here. So we are going to want to use lots of large sizings here. For some reason, I, po I thought the pot was $90, but it's $60. But I wanted to go 2x pot, but I ended up going 3x pot with a $180 bet. And my opponent actually thinks about it for a little bit. But unfortunately, we don't get paid. I think it's a little bit too big, and I really need to improve at math. Pocket Queens, let's go. Bumping up to $25 before all eight of my opponents fold. Anticlimactic. Opening up the Ace-10 offsuit under the gun to $25, and we get three callers. Going four ways to this flop, which is quite nice. It's 10-6 deuce rainbow. So when it checks to me, going to start with a small bet here of 25. We only get one caller from the button. Hence the turn, it's not great. It's the eight of diamonds. Some two pairs definitely got there as well as a straight. But I think that we can still keep getting some value here. So I put another bet of 100. I can't go too big because this board is getting kind of bad for me, to be honest. But my opponent once again makes a call. River is the four of clubs. Pretty decent river, I'd say. And if we didn't get raised on the turn, I think we're definitely good here. We could definitely run to pocket jacks, but whatever. Uh, gonna go for some value here, and I put in a bet of $300, which puts my opponent deep into the tank. A few minutes go by, and he is so close to calling and so close to folding. He's got the chips counted out, but he's got the cards in the air. The suspense. <laughs> is just killing me. I can't tell which one he's going to do. And eventually makes up his mind and decides on a fold. Ah, we don't get paid that one. Middle position has limped. The pro in the low jack has raised to 40. Uh, this time I decide just to call rather than re-raise with the king queen off on the straddle. And this invites the limper in. We go three ways to a flop of king 3-3 three, three rainbow. I check it over. Middle position checks. The pro puts in the bet of 40. And these low paired boards are actually very, very good for the either big blind or straddle. Which means we can start raising some top pairs that are a king, which is quite uncommon. King-queen is basically the only one along with king-3 suited. But against the small size, we are definitely raising. And I put in the raise up to 130. Middle position folds and low jack, after a little bit of thinking, also folds. Oh well. Middle position has limped. We looked at 4-3 of hearts on the button. Good enough for a raise on the button, so I make it 40 to go. Straddle and the limper call. We go three ways to a flop of 10, 6, 5, 2 hearts. What a monster flop for us. 
when it checks we are definitely going to start with a bet here always one third multi-way on the flop forty dollars and i should have slow played because both my opponents fold damn it we make a loosey-goosey open with a queen jack off in the cutoff to 25 and everyone folds i'm happy with that that's a good result the under the gun player has raised up to 30 i'm in the straddle and decide to defend with 8-6 off heads up to a flop of queen 8-7 rainbow check it over and my opponent checks behind turn is nice it's the four of clubs we pick up a gut shot i think it's a little bit too thin to go for value here so i just check my opponent once again checks behind river is the seven of clubs not my favorite card but it should be good enough uh my eight is probably good here gonna go for some value i put in a bet of 30 unfortunately my opponent just folds we have a hijack race to 25. I decide to make a pretty loose defend here with the queen jack off in the big blind, and the straddle gets out the way. Heads up to a flop of 10, 7, 5, all clubs. I check it over, and my opponent checks behind. Turn is the three of hearts. Gonna start bluffing here. I don't think he has much, and I don't bet too, too big on these monotone boards. So 15 in the middle, and we manage to pick up this pot. The under the gun player has made a very large raise to $50. I think he's definitely got something very strong. Hijack has called, and if he had made it 30, this hand would be a 100% squeeze. But since he went 50, I think we are just going to call here, and Straddle gets out the way. We get a pretty okay flop in the A7-3. We do have a backdoor flush shot and middle pair, but check it over. He continues for 65, Hijack folds, and I think we're getting okay odds here to call. I don't know, he could just have top set and we're drawn basically dead. But I decide to call this time. We do a backdoor straight and backdoor flush draw. Turn is the queen of clubs. We do pick up a draw. I check and my opponent checks this one back. River is the ten of hearts. No help to us. I check once again and we're just going to give up. I'm not going to bluff here. He puts in a pretty hefty bet too of 225. And yeah, we fold. Action folds to us in the small blind with a jack ten of clubs. Raised up to 30 and only the straddle calls. We got a pretty nice flop. Jack, 10, 9, rainbow. Unfortunately, no backdoor flush draw, but I'm going to start with a bet here with top two, and I make it 40, and unfortunately, my opponent just folds. Action folds to us on the button with king, jack, and I make it 30 to go. Only the big blind calls, so we're going heads up to this flop of 9, 9, 8, rainbow. My opponent checks, going to start with a small bet here of 20, and then we face a check raise to 100. He definitely has a draw here. But unfortunately, a draw probably has more equity than us. So as much as I want to hero call this down, I just don't think it's a good play. So I fold. Open up the ace, deuce of clubs, and the hijack up to 25. We get two callers from the cutoff and the buttons. So we're going three ways out of position to a board of queen, six, three, all hearts. I'm going to start with a very small bet here. See if I can take it down on the flop. I put in a bet of 15. Cutoff gets out the way. But now button puts in the raise up to $40 and let's play some street poker i don't think he's got it i think this is a find out where i'm at raise and i'm gonna let him know i once again put in another raise only up to 90 dollars just another small little feeler raise and it gets the job done we managed to pick that one off the pro is raised to 30 dollars in middle position we looked at an ace queen off could raise could call he is playing a little bit tighter right now so i'm just going to decide to call this time Straddle folds, and we go heads up to a flop of King-7-7 seven, seven, Rainbow. I check it, and he puts in a small bet of 20. We are going nowhere. We make the call. Turn is pretty much a blank, the six of hearts. I check once again, and he puts in another bet of about half pot, $65. I think we got a really nice hand here to call down, at least on the turn. We block Ace-King and King-Queen, so I make the call once again. River is the Jack of Spades, not my favorite card here, but I check it once again. And he puts another bet of 100. I don't like the size. This feels like value. I'm not a fan, but it's a really good price. We have a really nice call down hand here. So I make a pretty speculative call here. And we get shown the ace 10. Yes, we picked that one off. And we're going to win a nice little pot there with ace high. Hijack is raised to 30. We call with a pocket twos in the cutoff. We get two more callers as we go four ways to this flop of queen 10 deuce that's a set that's a set we finally hit one yes let's go unfortunately action checks all the way to me so i'm gonna have to do my own betting here 
I put in a small one third bet of $40 and only the hijack makes a call. Heads of the turn, it's not great, it's the eight of diamonds here. We do have the deuce of diamonds, which doesn't really count for too much here. But he checks once again, and I still want to keep going for some value. And if I'm betting a hand as bad as pocket twos on this board, you're going to have to size down a little bit to about 100, around half pot here. And unfortunately, my opponent just folds. But we still hit a set. We did it. Cut off has raised to 30, and I decide to defend the 10-7 off in the straddle. Heads up to a flop of queen, jack, five, two hearts, one club. I check it to my opponent, and he checks behind. We get a really nice turn. It's a seven of hearts, improving us to a flush draw, as well as a pair. I once again check to my opponent, and he puts in about a half pot bet of 30. Could raise, but I think our hand is okay enough to call, considering he checked back the flop, so that's just what I do. River is the nine of clubs, and now we've got a really nice hand to check raise bluff. But I check it. And my opponent just checks behind, so feeling pretty good about it. I roll it over, and we run into the top pair, top kicker. We pick up pocket kings here. Open up the action to $25, and it folds around to the pro in the blinds, who puts in the raise up to 100. Straddle gets out the way, and when it's back on us, we are a little bit deep here at around 1,200 effective. So it could call, but I think pocket aces would like to call a bit more, and then... Definitely go for the four bet with pocket kings here. We go two and a half X in position. I make it $250. It gives us some thought and it makes the call. We go to the most disgusting flop that doesn't contain an ace. It's queen jack 10. At least it's rainbow. At least it's rainbow. But that is a messy looking flop for pocket kings. My opponent checks and on these queen jack 10 boards, since we do have a little bit more ace-king than our opponent, since he is supposed to go all in pre-flop with some of them, I think that we can get away with a disgustingly small bet here with our entire range. We are still going to have hands like queens. We are going to have a lot of ace-kings, some pocket aces, some pocket kings. And yeah, I'm going to go for a very, 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 very small bet of one-tenth pot, $50 here. And there's not much my opponent can do to exploit this, unless he has ace-king himself which should just call anyways. But we don't even get a call and my opponent just folds, which honestly, after seeing that flop, actually feels pretty good. I'm very happy with that. Looking down at queen three of clubs in the straddle, facing a raise from low jack, a hijack call and a small blind call. We defend and we take this flop four ways. King five, five, uh, two hearts, nothing going on for us. So when the hijack bets out for 40, we fold. Easy game. The under the gun player has, instead of straddling, decided to limp this hand. I look down at pocket sevens and bump it up to $25. Small blind now puts in the re-raise up to $85. Big blind folds, and now the limper shoves his whole stack in there for $550. You dirty, dirty limp re-raiser. I will never forgive you for this. We obviously fold. The very next shuffle, we pick up the exact same hand, suits and all. This is hand number 56, the final hand of the session. Let's end it with a bang. Hijack has called, and I raise it up to $40. We get one caller from the small blind, as well as a big blind, as well as a hijack. So we're getting four ways to this flop, and it comes down. Queen, 10, 5, rainbow. Damn it. Action checks to me. We're just going to check this one back. We take a turn. It is the king of spades. Damn it. Action checks to me once again, and we are just going to check this back. River, it's the jack of hearts. Unfortunate. Small blind puts in a very small bet of 50. Folds to me. And out of everyone here that can have an ace, I think small blind is the least likely. Uh, I know he's an upswing lab member, and usually they advocate for a three bet or fold strategy out of the small blind. So I expect him to have only hands that play very well multi-way, namely smaller pocket pairs. So I think... He's just getting a little out of line here. And once again, with these sort of four to a straight boards, as well as like double paired boards or trips boards, your raises are very, very, very small. Very, 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 very small. Min raise is what I prefer, so $100. Unfortunately, my opponent actually has it, and he has the ace. Oh, it doesn't show, but he had the ace three of clubs, and we are going to lose our final hand. Shortly after this, we do rack up, and we manage to book a win at Park. All right, guys, we are just getting back in now from that session. It was a long one. It started off so poor. I was just annoyed, just so tilted, so annoyed for whatever reason. 
and I took a few breaks, and then we moved to the 2 five, 10 game, and that really helped. The whole table was drinking, we're all having fun, needling each other, which I absolutely love. But at the end of it all, we were in the game for 1700 out for 4500 and change, which is a beautiful win of, I think, 2700 maybe. I'm going to put the numbers here because I can't add right now. But it's late. Uh, this was over a nine-hour session. It was a lot of hands. Really glad to finally book a win at Park. And yeah, that is it for me, you guys. Hope you're enjoying these twice-weekly videos. Do some more likes for me. Thank you. I'll see you guys next week.